so this guys over here is our touch module you can see that behind is the pick and this is the led we just programmed let me press the button see the led turns on as soon as the button is pressed the led remains on see this is the led we just programmed that if the button is pressed it should remain on so let me show you the programming as well so see that in the programming what we did we just initialize the led pin we initialize the button pin and then we check if the button is pressed if it's pressed the led turns on if it's not pressed else it remains off simple as that so this programming gives us this result over here that once we press the button the led turns on and it remains off as soon as we release it else it turns off simple as that hello guys welcome to learning microcontrollers in this video, I will show you how we can interface a TTP223 touch module with a PIC16 FH77A microcontroller. So let's get started. So guys, this over here is the TTP223 touch module. As you can see, it is very simple. It has only three pins, ground input and VCC. And from the other side, it's touch, like you just touch it and uh, it will send the signal to the microcontroller. Now guys, this over here is its top view. Let me label it for you. Also, it is already labeled. The topmost pin is a ground pin. If you hold it like this, then you have signal. And the signal pin is whenever you press it, it will send a one. With, by default, it's zero. But as soon as you press the button, it sends a one to the microcontroller. And the third one is the VCC pin. And it's a five volt module. It can work from 3.3 .3 to like maximum of 5.5 .5 volt. So it's very convenient with microcontrollers. So let's connect it with a PIC. So this is our uh, TTP223 touch module. And uh, as labeled before, top one is a ground, then we have signal, then we have VCC pin. And this over here is a PIC16 FH77A microcontroller, 40 pins, it's a DIP variant. Now guys, let's connect it. Now you connect the ground pin directly with the ground of the PIC. Signal pin to any available digital input output, output pin of the PIC. I'm going to use the pin number D2, that is pin number 21 of the PIC. And for the VCC pin, just connect it to the VCC of the PIC. So PIC will power up this uh, touch module using its power source. Simple as that. Now guys, to display the output, for the demonstration purpose, I will be using this LED, a 5mm LED. As you can see that this LED has two pin, one longer, one shorter. The longer is the power, the shorter is the ground. As you already know, you cannot shuffle these two pins. It's a polar component. So guys, now to connect it with a PIC, you will need a safety register, which will limit the current. So you can use any value from 100 to up to 500 ohm. Higher the value of the resistor, the dimmer the LED will go. So I'm gonna use a 220 ohm resistor. Now you connect the longer pin of the LED to one end of the 220 ohm resistor like this. Then from the other end of this resistor, you connect it to the to any available digital input output pin of the PIC, I'm gonna use a pin number D3 like this. Now guys, the ground of the LED will go to the ground of the PIC like this. In this way, our connections are completed. Now, whenever we will press this button, I will program the circuit in such a way that once a button is pressed, a signal will be sent to the PIC, and then PIC, PIC will be programmed in a way that it will turn on the LED. For as long as the button is pressed, the LED will be on, else it will remain off. So now, before we continue, let me introduce you to the hardware, then we move on to the programming. So guys, this over here is the hardware. This is the LED I'm gonna use. And this is the touch module. And that in the background is the PIC16 FA77A. And there is our PIC3.5 uh, programming device. So let's do the programming. So guys, this over here is a micro C4 PIC. Let me zoom in so you guys can see better. So we have zoomed in. And the version I'm using is 7.2.0. You can use the latest version as well. You can use the free version as well. As shown in my video, how you can download that. I will share the link to that video in the description as well. Click on File, New, New Project. This window pops up, New Project Wizard. Click on Next. Write the name of the project. TTP223 Tutorial by Learning Microcontrollers. That's the name of the project I wrote. You can write any name as you prefer. Okay. Now guys, this is the path where the files will be created and select the microcontroller you are gonna use. I'm gonna use a PIC16 after double seven a and select the crystal that is connected to the pin number 13 and 14 of the PIC. I have a crystal of uh, 20 megahertz over there, so I will write 20 here. Since PIC16 pic FH77A don't have an internal oscillator, so you will simply use the value connected as external oscillator. Click on next and finish. Now guys, this window 
pops up before you do anything else first of all press ctrl s to save your work now guys first of all we initialize our pins so as shown in the presentation there you can see that we are using only two pins d3 for the led and d2 for the touch module so let's initialize them as well now so first of all trace d dot f3 equals to zero because it's an led pin this is the direction register trace and this is the port and this is the led number of sorry pin number and zero means the port pin has been declared output and one means it's an input so by default the led is always connected to an output pin now uh, give uh, give the initial state initially the led must be off that when once we run the uh, programming the led must be off by default so port d dot f3 equals to zero we have sent a zero to this pin give some initialization delay not necessary but i always suggest you give it in the one time loop now guys we initialize the touch uh, module input pin for that we are using trace d dot f2 equals to one now see the difference for the led it was an output pin so we declared the direction to be zero which means output now for the uh, input that is a button button is always connected to an input pin so trace d dot f2 that is pin number f2 pin number 21 is one it means it's an it declared as an input pin now guys initial state will be decided by the module we just give some initialization delay we don't need to give a initial state to such an input sensor or device because that automatically keeps on sending the value as soon as it turns on so now we start from here now this is from here the forever loop will start right down while one this is a forever loop starting here and ending here now first of all we check if the button is pressed we write if port d dot f2 double equals to one it means if the button is pressed then what it should do it should turn on the led that is port d dot f3 which is currently off equals to one now in case the button is not pressed then else the led will remain off that is the initial state of the led and this is the initial state of the led led will go back in the initial state that is this state now guys this is simple code as that now we build this it's built successfully without any error now we go to our picket 3 programmer tool go to file import the hex file this is the file we just created I will also give you a link to this programming tool I have a video on that as well that how you can download and install it in that video there is a link as well to freely download this tool so I will also share the link to that video in the description as well now click on write okay the new code is being written let's get to the hardware see what happens so this is the hardware and let it write the code okay the once the code is written then we see what happens okay the code is written and the circuit is powered up using the picket 3 programming tool now i zoom out and i just touch the button see the led turns on this led belongs to the module and this is the one we just programmed see it's on so simple as that see it is very sensitive just you have to bring the finger near you don't even have to touch it that's very good see that it's very very good thing i i would i really recommend this this touch button see you just have to bring your finger near you don't even have to press it see it is working like a charm so guys this is it if you have any questions you can ask in the comment i will share the code uh, programming in the description of the video you can play with the code to learn better so guys we'll see you in the next video